let's back up and take, start with some basics here. We also know about matter, right? Solid stuff, whatever it might be, okay? If we break that down, we discover matter is made up of molecules. And our typical molecules uh, typically have a nucleus surrounded by one or more electrons. And uh, H2O, you have an oxygen molecule, and then you have two hydrogen uh, molecules that share electrons with it to make a neutral um, composite. Uh, and and uh, that's what we call, you know, hi two hydrogen, one oxygen. We call it H2O. It's water, fair enough. Uh, you can add, uh, you can take a carbon and uh, take going out another level, and you have methane. But again, molecules tend to be clusters of atoms that are sharing electrons. But because I won't get into the valences and all that, but that's getting the chemistry. You begin to understand how, why it is that certain molecules attract other certain atoms to, and they can, some of them make chains. We call those hydrocarbons and so forth. But uh, let's talk about the different states. Let's take water, H2O. How many are familiar with water? Okay, good. We're together. What some people would call the fourth state, I'm going to call the first state. In its most disorganized state, in its most it, it highest energy levels, it would be in plasma. What you have, oxygen, I'm going to use oxygen molecules here as a blue dot. I'm going to use hydrogen atoms as a, a uh, yellow dot. And if we have a scattering of disassociated oxygen atoms and disassociated uh, hydrogen atoms, we have what's called a plasma. Because each of the elements of this thing have an electric charge. Collectively, it may balance to zero. But the individual blue things are positively charged. The individual yellow things are negatively charged. Okay, so now, as the, as you start to compress this a little bit, you get a gas, and that's where these things are linked. The molecules of H and two O's have existence as a unit, but they're they they they're free to flow. That's why it's gaseous. I want to back up so you understand. The plasma is not gas. It's what we might call ionized gas. It consists of electrical things that are fluid, if you will. Gas is electrically neutral. And of course, as gas cools uh, down, you get a liquid called water, right? And as that water starts to freeze, you have a solid. And by the nature of the, of the uh, water has some peculiarities I don't get into here in terms of its crystalline structure, but most of you realize that they, there's a, there is a, uh, you know, a six-fold structure intrinsic to the geometry of the molecules. Okay, but the point I want to get at here that most of us in school learn there have matter has three states: solid, liquid, and a gas. Wrong. There's a fourth state. I'm showing it here as the first state for some reasons because it really is the first state, and that is plasma. Don't confuse most press articles, most magazine articles. People who are not in the know will confuse plasma as simply a gas. No, it's, a, it's actually, a, it has behavior unique to itself because it's electrical, not just gas. So these things are four states of matter, not three. And uh, entropy, randomness, is maximized in plasma. Order, specificity, tightness is at the other extreme. That's what makes it solid. This feels solid, okay? If this was ice, it would be solid until it warmed up enough to melt, then it becomes liquid, and then if it gets warmer, it finally turns into steam, and ultimately it turns into a, a plasma, and we'll, we'll talk more about that on another occasion. So matter, we've talked about, okay, we've got atoms here. Let's talk a little bit about the atom, and some of this is review for you. Let's take the simplest atom. We have a, a hydrogen atom here. It has a nucleus and has an electron running about it. The nucleus in the middle, electron spinning around it. Now, this is not the scale. Let's talk about scale a little bit. The nucleus is about 10 to the minus 13 centimeters. That's very, very small, of course. The atom itself is about 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. It's small, but not, it's substantially larger, obviously, than the nucleus. Let's, how much larger? Well, the ratio of those things are 
10 minus 8 divided by 10 minus 13 is 10 to the fifth. In other words, the atom is 100,000 times the size of the nucleus linearly. Now, area-wise, you have to square that. Volumetrically, you've got a cubit. So if you take 10 to the fifth and cubit, that turns out to be 10 to the fifth to the cube, cubed is 10 to the 15th. The, the relationship of that nucleus to the volume that the atom is taking is the same ratio as one second has to how much? 30 million years. Wow is right. See, what you need to do as we start dealing with these things, you want to get a, you don't have to know how big an atom is, but you need a feeling for what we're dealing with here. So the, the atom is about 100,000 times linearly larger than the nucleus, but you've got to cube that to get the volume, right? Square it for area, cube it for volume. So you've got 10 to the fifth to the third power, which is 10 to the 15th, and 10 to the 15th, the powers of 10 are convenient, but you need to get a feeling for them. Okay, that's the same as one second on your watch is to 30 million years. Now that should get across that the atoms are mostly empty. If I said there's nothing here, I'm more right than to those of you who say, no, that's solid. No, no, there's more empty space here than solid stuff by a ratio of one second to 30 million years. It's mostly empty. Well, then why does it feel solid? Because the atoms, the electrical fact, uh, fields of the atoms are colliding with the atoms of my hand to make it feel solid. You with me? So we're going to explore tonight four forces that are found in the universe and what they mean. Okay? Mm -hmm.